we've already established the fact that God has made a covenant of increase with us as his people. And so God wants us to establish his covenant in the earth. He wants his covenant to be established in our lives. And also he wants his will implemented in the earth. And so we've seen that the blessing comes upon us, God's empowerment, God's enablement, his, his, his super on our natural to assist us and to help us. Now, what I want to talk to you about now, and I want to encourage you is this. I don't care how long it's been. I don't care how long it's been since the promise of God was spoken to you, that God is saying right now that no matter how long it's been, that you can function in the fullness of this thing in your life. And I believe that God is going to stir up some things in you today and that he wants to share some things with you that's going to be a blessing to you and encourage your faith because the, the struggle is over, glory to God. And so what I'm praying about is not only the teaching anointing that it begins to flow, but also that prophetic utterance because God spoke one thing to me. He says this at the beginning of this year or at the end of last year, he says, I want you to begin to put this prophetic, the prophetic ministry that I've given you, I want you to bring it to the forefront. And you begin to speak and to declare things. Now, I'm not talking about conjuring up anything, but as the Spirit wills, as the Holy Spirit begins to lead God and direct, even while I'm teaching today and preaching today, there may be some things where he just disrupts and drops some nuggets, drops some gems, drops some tools, some, some things that is just going to hit your spirit. And it'll be like that aha moment. And so with that comes now a declaration of authority, glory to God, that now when you begin to speak and we begin to speak and with this anointing, as I begin to speak, I am believing for a disruption of anything that has held you back from the past, in the past, in the present, whatever is trying to disrupt your increase, whatever is trying to disrupt your prosperity, whatever is trying to disrupt even your mindset, even from you even receiving this word today, I'm, a, I'm coming for the enemy that's even attacking your mind and attacking your family and attacking your life in the name of Jesus. And so we ain't playing no games with the devil because my father told me to preach on this and he said there's a reason why he told me to preach on this. And all I'm going to do is obey what the Spirit of God says and I'm expecting for you to receive and I'm expecting for you to hear. So I need your expectation to be on high today. I need for you to participate with me. There is no distance in the Spirit. I miss seeing you guys. I miss the human interaction. You know, it's something about it. But you listen, you can pull on this anointing. I want you to begin to expect God to speak. I want you to begin to expect to hear answers. I want you to expect. And so go ahead, grab your pens, your pads, get ready to write down what God is speaking to you today. Amen. Now, we want to talk real quick. I'm going to give you kind of like the end from the beginning and give you a quick little summary here. And that there are practical laws that govern prosperity in the kingdom of God. And in order to experience this financial prosperity that God has destined for your life, we must learn both the spiritual and the natural aspects of acquiring wealth. The spiritual and the natural aspects. A lot of times you got some people that are just all spiritual, no practical. Then you got some people that are just so practical, they don't know how to invite the spiritual into the situation to cause the acceleration of some things. And so God wants to deal with both sides, that there are things that he wants us to fuse together, these laws, these principles, to now see, at, to see progression, to see increase, and to see advancement in Jesus' name. All right, now let's, let's go ahead with this now. Um, let me, let me, let me, let me, let me start by saying this. Um, one of the things, one of the reasons I believe that when God starts implementing a message in the earth, he's trying to get something across to his people. And I remember many years ago when this message of prosperity really hit the scene, that there was such controversy over it. There was such a thing as like, man, people were just like, you know what? All preachers want is your money. All, and listen, I understand that there may have been some people that may have taken the message and done some things wrong with it. And then sometimes whenever, God's imp whenever God implements something in the earth, whenever there's a move of the Spirit of God, there is something that the enemy tries to use to bring disruption or to discredit the message by sometimes discredit discrediting the messenger. And then sometimes people take it and go on one tangent or the other. And I understand that. But God is saying it is his will, and we've seen the word of God, where it is his will for us to prosper and to have good success. Now, starting 
in um, the book of 3 John and 2 because prosperity, number one, begins with the prospering of the soul. And the one, of the, one of the things, one of the main reasons why people have not experienced a level of success in their lives and increase is because the thinking has been shifted and altered in, in a way that it now does not receive the, the word of God. Because don't forget, with this kingdom renaissance, that means that God says, I want my mindset to be put in you. So that means when God introduces a principle, a law to you, you have to now take that principle, take that law, and now say, okay, God, now I'm, a, I'm talking to Christians right now because those that have now named Jesus as Lord and Savior, we are Christians or Christ-like. And so God, Christ, the, 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 the Godhead represented bodily here that walked this planet. He is the head of the church. When we understand principles and laws from the Word of God, we have to implement them in our lives. So that means if it's something that we are doing, currently doing, that goes against the way God says to do it, then we need to change and conform to it, not try to make it conform to us. That is going to be one of the first things. That is going to be one of the first things. And I remember when this message hit the body of Christ at an all-time high, and I began to see prominent black men begin to preach this message. Because now, now this is one of the things, and, and as I'm preaching this stuff, and as I was meditating on it yesterday and studying some things out and getting ready for today, I began to think about some things. I began to think about just the mentality, just the, you know, to, to see to see God be able to do something with a race of people. Now, listen, I understand. There are black folk, white folk, Asian folk, Hispanic folk. There could be all types of um, ethnicities watching and listening. But I do recognize this. As a black man in this earth, an African-American man, that my audience at this point has been primarily African-American. But I'm believing for greater. I'm believing for broader because this message of increase is for all, okay? Not just for some, but the issue has been because primarily the African-American race has been so disproportionately, I mean, just marginalized and the system has been structured to keep people down over so long that there was a message that God brought into the earth to bring liberation, to bring freedom, and so some people may have taken and gone off to some tangent and started seeking things other than seeking God and that God wanted us to be blessed. He doesn't mind us having things. He just doesn't want things to have us. And because it, it, the, the income levels, the opportunities have been so unbalanced that God was trying to rectify and is rectifying things in the earth. And so sometimes what happens is this. When there is such a need in an area, then there will be a focus towards talking about that need. And sometimes what happens is it comes across to some people that you're talking too much about it. But the reason why we had to talk about it so much, it was because we was in such bad shape in this earth, in this country, and in this nation that that word had to come with a force and with a power to eradicate every demonic force that was behind the oppression of a people. So God had to raise up men and women in the earth to declare the word of God, to declare that God wanted us wealthy, to declare that God wanted us prosperous, to declare that God wanted us successful. And so now we need to take that message and we need to now advance it because what God is saying, he wanted us to prosper completely, totally, spirit, soul, and body. He wanted the whole thing brought together. And so this is why it was so important. And so even as I was studying, I was pulling up some um, statistics, it was like the, the African-American race, and this was from 2019, I believe, at this time. Uh, I think this was the last, the numbers um, that I was able to pull up at this time, that African, the African-American race, the average household income was disproportionately lower than those above. The top, now I, I was interested, it was really interesting for me to see some of this because the top average income were amongst Asian people. Second were whites. Third were Hispanic, Latino community. And then lastly was the African-American community. And I thought that was really interesting. 
And a lot of times it's based off of culture. And there can be many factors that determine that, okay? Many factors. So this is just not an end all. Say, y'all, I'm just letting you know some of these things. And so when I begin to see that, it's like, you know what? It's something about what is it, God? And I know many people out there have been asking this question. Lord, what is it about this black man? What is it about this people? What is it that you are trying to do? What is it? What is the, what is the thing? Why have, a people, this, why have our people been so disproportionately oppressed in certain areas and things have hit? There is something to this thing. And God, what God is doing, and I believe that God has already and is continuously raising up men and women across this planet that's going to bring a revival in this earth in such a tremendous way. And this is one of the things that God is saying. He's told me, he says, Mike, go teach my people who they are. And so now that means this, that God is saying, I need the fullness of who they are to come forth. The fullness. Because once they realize who they are, then they'll begin to believe who they are. They'll begin to live like who they are. And now they'll begin to see certain things happen and take place because they'll no longer tolerate being oppressed, being underneath, because I've called them the head and not the tail. I've called you above and not beneath. And so you got to take on a mentality that I refuse to live beneath the privileges that my God has already provided for me. Jesus came and died to bring us up. And so now he's saying this, you got to take this mentality on because sometimes what some of you and some of us have done over the years is we have, we've done these things. We'll accept one part of what God says, but reject the other part of it. Yeah. We, you know, people struggle with even with healing when a healing revolution took place in the body of Christ and in the earth. And people was talking about that and saying stuff like God put sickness on you because he was trying to teach you something. God ain't got to use Satan's stuff in order to teach us his lessons. He teaches us his word by, he teaches us our lessons by his word and by his spirit. And then other things came in. Then the gifts of the spirit began to come in and operate. And then people's talking about, you know what, that tongue stuff is of the devil. And because the Holy Spirit, who is our helper, who is our teacher, the third person of the Godhead came to abide in us, to live and to dwell in us. Now all of a sudden people are talking about, man, what's wrong with y'all? Y'all don't know what to do. And all of a sudden we had to learn too that the Holy Spirit, he is very intelligent. He is the most powerful being, the most powerful partner that we have here on this planet because he's here with us as the body of Christ in the earth. And then all of a sudden now this word came about where prosperity was concerned that God wanted you rich. And some people struggle with that and say, you know what? That is a lie. God don't want you rich. He wants you poor. He wants you struggling because poverty shows how humble you are before God. Poverty shows that you, you know, you struggling. So you in there with God. And all of a sudden God is like, no, I want my people blessed. Listen, why would God create wealth and not want his children to have it? Why would God create a garden and put his man Adam in there to tend the garden? And the Bible lets us know that gold was in the garden. Then in Deuteronomy 8.18, God says, I've given you the power to get wealth so that my covenant can be established here on the earth. So it is not the will of God for us to be broke. It is not the will of God for us to be in lack. It is his will for us to prosper and succeed. Now, okay, now that I got all of that up, this is setting the tone. Because sometimes what has happened is when a culture has been created amongst the people, that culture or that mindset, that's really, it's a way of doing, a way of living, a way of being. But a culture is, is cultivated by the mindset of the people in it. And a lot of times things have been just passed down from generation to generation or things have not been passed down from generation to generation. And so you got to understand that even though that there may be practical things, natural systems set up in order to cause defeat and despair, but God says this, I've given you authority over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by enemies hurt you. 
That means that there are laws that no matter what they set in place, God is causing us to rise up above and beyond those things. And that even though, yes, I understand that there are things that have been set in place. There have been systems that have been set in place. But God says, I've given you authority. I've given you power and I've given you ability not only to, tra to transform those laws and to change those laws, but to override them with higher laws from the spirit. There is nobody that can stop you but you. Nobody that can stop you but you. And I know, yep, I know. So I, and, I, and I begin to wrestle with something. I just say, you know what, God, I'm going to have to preach what I believe. Bottom line, I can't do nothing else because if I believe it, I'm going to say it. And I need to begin to say some things. And it may go crosswise to how some of you are really feeling because you put so much emphasis on your oppressor that you don't realize you've already been made free. And that whom the son is set free is free indeed. So I'm coming today. I'm coming for that mentality. I'm coming for that spirit that's behind this. And I understand what comes with it now. And I understand what God wants me to do with this thing. And I got to be pinpoint and accurate. And I know how the adversary works. And I'm locking into this thing. And I'm going to preach this word to you. And I want you to be ready to be open to receive it. Because there will be transformation and change that takes place. Now let's get into this thing now. Now I done said all of that. I've let that all out. Now let's talk. Now, number one, when I begin to talk about, I, I said prosperity begins in the soul. And that's in 3 John 2, that he says this, I wish or pray above all things that you would prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. So we've already attacked that. That prosperity is not what you have, but prosperity is who you are. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. The Bible declares that. So you must think a certain way first. See, you will prosper to the degree that your soul, which is comprised of the mind, the will, the intellect, the emotions, the imagination, your mind or memory retains information, your will enforces it, your intellect comprehends it, your emotions tell you how you feel about it, and your imagination gives you the blueprint to execute it. Sometimes you got to now understand how to control your emotions, and we're going to get into that, even talking about emotional spending and things like that, that we have to control, that as we begin to renew our minds to the word, and as we begin to change how we think, we'll change our actions, we'll change our habits and our character, and those decisions and things of that nature. And so now, when your soul is prosperous, then financial wealth will be drawn to you. It'll be drawn to you. I, I was talking to my son about this the other day, just about some things with athletics and sports, and I said something about when a person is confident, that there are things that players and people can tell by your body language, how you carry yourself. You can, you can look at people and tell when they're not confident, when they're not sure about themselves in certain things. And what happens is if you're not confident, then other people won't be confident in you. And so sometimes a person can pass the ball right past you because you don't even look like you're ready to receive it. And so, and I, and I just begin to think about that. This is what so many things in life that a lot of times things aren't drawn because you're not expecting it. You're not posturing yourself forward. You're not carrying yourself like it belongs to you. That when you get to that place where now you already see in your head that you are already, you are already prosperous, successful, that you're already at that place, then you begin to see things drawn to you, opportunities drawn to you. That listen, I don't want to get ahead of myself. God is saying it like this. Are you preparing for what you're expecting? Are you preparing yourself to, to receive greater, to receive increase? Are you ready for it? Number one, do you even believe it's God's will? And hopefully by this time, you know, after all the scriptures we've been shown you and, and things that have been said, hopefully that part has already been dealt with. And you got to meditate on that. And you got to get your soul to the place where you're accepting it is God's will for me to prosper. It is his will for me to be successful. And this is how you prosper by meditating. This is how you prosper your soul by meditating on God's word and increasing your information base. You meditate on the word, increase your information base where, you know, wealth is concerned, money is concerned, how it works, how to handle it. How to, how to structure yourselves, things of that nature. You need to increase your information base. You cannot, listen, God is bringing you out head first, glory to God. Spiritually, you are already there. 
because you're already seated together with Christ in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. But there are many people seated together with Christ, but still struggle financially. So that means now, like Paul said in Romans 12 and 2, don't be conformed to this word, but be transformed by the entire renewal of your mind, by its new ideals and its new attitude. So what are your new ideals and your new attitude where money is concerned? We got to begin to deal with that. And then next, you must practically act out on what you believe in order to get results from God's word. You must practically act out on what you believe in order to get results from God's word. This comes out of James 2 and 7, 2, 17, excuse me. James chapter 2, verse 17, that faith without works or practical application is dead. And so when we're saying we're believing God for something, but we never act out on it, then we'll never see the results of the fruit. And this is where hope deferred makes the heart sick. And sometimes there's deferred hope because you never acted out on your faith. When that thing hits you to begin to step out, you didn't do it. And over a period of time, if you continuously disobey, then all of a sudden your expectation begins to lower. And so you don't move into it. So now what God wants to do is rekindle some things in some people, reestablish some things in some people, but also introduce some things to some people to get you to a certain place. Because everybody may not be on the same plat the same page or the same level that's watching and that's listening and tuning in. So now, as I begin to write, there were three things that I thought about that we need to be mindful of when we're handling our finances. So let's talk about some of this stuff. Number one, how we sow. We talked about giving, even this past Thursday, we dealt with giving and the different types of, of giving and, and how to give the tithe, the offerings and your first fruit offerings and giving to the poor and things of that nature. Then number two, how we save. You need to learn how to pay yourself. You know, after you honor God and you pay God, pay yourself. Okay. And so even thinking about that and talking about that. So, and even with the savings, I, I kind of tied in the investing side to that. What is it that you're putting money away for for yourself to pay you? A lot of times we get so focused on paying others, but, that, but we don't take care of ourselves. And God wants us. It's biblical to even put money aside and to put it away. So we want to talk about that as well. And then how we spend, how we pay others. So how we sow, how we save, how we spend. So that's, that means talking about paying or honoring God, paying yourself, and then paying others. So what, what, what are these things? Okay. And so we want to talk about that. We want to deal with that, that we want to first honor God in our financial life. Okay, God, let me honor you with this tithe. Let me honor you with this offering. What is it that you want me to sow? What is it that you want me to give? And so now I need to do that because God says, okay, there is always a strategy for you. There's always an exit plan and an exit strategy for where you currently are. There's a way, even the scripture talks about there's a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the end of it is destruction. So we don't just want to take our way of it, but we also want to introduce, okay, God, give me your plan. Give me wisdom. Show me things to do. And then two, let me also take the initiative to study these things out and to study practical methods and things as the number one, what does the word of God say? Number two, uh, what are some practical applications? Now, let me say this. The practical comes right out of his word too. There are things that God systematically shows us, you know, something like in the book of Proverbs, it talks about not being surety for somebody else. In other words, not co-signing for other people, not co-signing loans. That's out of the book of wisdom. It's like, because if they can't pay it, then it comes on you. And that's not a good financial practice that scripture even tells us not to do. See, it's things like that, that is, is all in the word. You know, it's all in the scripture, but we got to know how to go in it. And one thing that's very interesting, the Bible has more to say about money than it does even heaven. There are more scriptures. Look it up. There are more scriptures that talk about finances and talk about money than even heaven itself. And so God wants us to know how to function in this earth. Okay. <clears throat> now, there are five provision levels. I, I want to I want to deal with this real quick. Five provision levels that we must realize that as we're growing, that you need to kind of identify where are you in this level, in these levels. Number one, let me just go ahead and share it and I'll, I'll explain a little better. Number one is the provision level. Number one is the provision level. This is where your basic needs are met. You know, you, you believe God, you know, the rent is paid or 
you know, <clears throat> uh, you, you get groceries, you believe in you're hungry and all of a sudden, you know, groceries show up at your front door or somebody says, you know what? God laid it on my heart to take you out to eat or to buy you groceries or to take care of you. Or say, you know what? You on my heart. Do you need anything? And so God is meeting on a consistent basis, your basic needs. And so this is, this is the lowest level. It's just the provisional level that, that, that you, you have no extra, you have no surplus, none of that stuff. Just your basic necessities are met. Okay. And for some, there are people who are struggling that, Hey, I haven't even gotten to that place. That is almost a struggle where you feel as though that not even some of the basic things are met. And so now this is your first like tier of getting, okay, basic things taken care of. Then level number two is sufficiency. Sufficiency is having as much as desired or enough. It's, it's having as much as is desired or enough. So you, you, you're pretty good. You, you know, your house is taken care of. Your family is taken care of. Um, you, you, you haven't gotten to the place where you're taking care of others, but at least you're good. Okay. And so that's the place where some people just want to get to, but I want to tell you, uh, -uh, that, that you cannot stop there because that's a selfish mentality. Because if all you're concerned about is you and your house and you don't have anybody else in mind, that is not the will of God because he says he wants you blessed to be a blessing. And it is more blessed to give than to receive. It is more of an empowerment to be a blessing to others. And if you don't have enough to even take care of your stuff, if you don't have that extra, now all of you are doing is you're just only concerned about what you want and, and, and your needs as long as your children are taken care of and your household and that's it. It's like me and my four and no more. Like, no, -uh, you don't want to stop there. You, now it's good that you're able to take care of your household. It's good that you're, that you have sufficiency, but God says there's more than that. Then the next level is the level of abundance. That's having extra that you can take and begin to use it also to be a blessing to others. But watch this also to use the extra to produce more, to use that to now, whether it's invest or it's to start a business or to start a ministry or to start something or to now, you know, something where it can begin to generate and it can begin to grow and it can begin to increase. And so sometimes what happens is when people get extra, man, they wild out. If you've been a place that you were, you've been at like pr provision level for so long and then God brings you up to extra. Sometimes listen, I've been there done. I know what it's like. Sometimes when you starve for so long, and then more comes in. Sometimes part of what you feel like doing is catching up <laughs> on all the stuff that you didn't get while you was broke. <laughs> and so, and then what happens now is you take the extra and now begin to just consume, consume, consume because you were neglected for so long. And God says, you got to hold off. You got to hold off because even though you have extra, this is going to be the catalyst for you propelling into this next arena, which is wealth and riches that now wealth. Now, now, now this is important because I've seen people do, I, listen, I know what it's like. It's like, man, I, I neglected myself for so long and you know, you know, I didn't buy the clothes I wanted to buy. And now that I got a little extra dough, a little extra cash. Now I want to go ahead and get the joints that I never could get back then. Now I'm trying to make up for it now. And God has said, wait a minute, wait a minute. If you're trying to get to this ultimate place that I have for you, you're going to have to be disciplined. You're going to have to be disciplined. I know. And there are moments where God will allow you to get certain things and he'll motivate you. He'll say, okay, go ahead and get that. I'm releasing you to go ahead and get that. This is now why you got to hear from God, even during these stages, Lord, what would you have for me to do with this money? And so now, even from a stewardship standpoint, we want to be wise at this stage. We want to be wise to say, okay, now I have this money. I can do something with it to multiply and to increase. Now, now the, the fourth level that I just kind of walked into was wealth and riches. Now, now this is the interesting part. The, the riches is based off of the money, the income or the, the resources, but the wealth, now watch this. Wealth is measured by time. You need to write that down. Wealth is measured by time. In other words, how long can I sustain 
my current lifestyle if I stop working. That's how you measure your wealth. Because some people are still living paycheck to paycheck. And so now if you can't, if you, if you could not stop working today, you have not entered into this arena yet. So this is why a lot of people begin to share little practical things like begin to save up six, five to six months of your monthly expenses. That will determine my wealth would be determined in by six months. I have six months of wealth or I can only survive properly six months from there. If I stop working today and I stop receiving a paycheck today, if I stop receiving the income from whatever source it is today, what money do I have that's generated and generating to take care of me from here on out? This is why the extra is going to be so important because I wish I had my board. I wanted to get a board and show you some things and I may do it a little later, but see, these are some things where you got to kind of find out where you are, where generating income. And I was going to deal with this when I start talking about some of the laws, but I kind of want to jump on in here right now that, um, that there are four categories where producing wealth, you will begin to see. Um, number one, and, and for those that know, you'll begin to pick up on this as I'm talking about it, for some that are aware and familiar with this strategy, um, that there are four quadrants. And, and if I had a board, I would show you like an E and S on the left-hand side, and then an, a B and an I on the right-hand side. And so the E on the left-hand side of the quadrant would be an employee. You work for somebody. And the only thing about working for somebody is your level of increase is, is capped based off of what they're willing to pay you at that point. Because sometimes when you do like yearly evaluations, they'll give you a scale of what, where maybe where you currently are and what's the max that you can make at that position within the company. So even though God can bless you to a degree, he's limited by the cap of that organization. Because now, all of a sudden now, you can only make but so much under somebody else. You gotta be mindful of that. And we realize that most people are in that category. There's nothing wrong with having a job, there's nothing working for a company, but you must realize the limitations that go there to a degree. You must, limit, you must realize certain things. And for you to go to another level, you're gonna have to do something a little different. And so then the S up under that is self-employed. Well, okay, you, you, you step out and, and you start your own business or start your own company, but now it's dependent upon you working all the time in order to generate. So you don't have the, the, the structure in some cases of a, a business that maybe you're working for. And the one thing about self-employed, you listen, it's different when you're working for yourself versus working for somebody else. You have the comfort of now being a beneficiary from things like, and I'm gonna just talk about some of these things, things like um, the healthcare plan or benefits package that a, a big company can receive versus you maybe just starting off by yourself, that now you paying for medical insurance $200 out of each paycheck or whatever, but if you did it by yourself, you have to pay $600. You see what I'm saying? So it might be 200 a month that you pay or 300 total a month, but when you buy yourself, it almost doubles or triples because now they give them um, breaks because of the amount of people with the package that they present to a company. See, these are the things. So I, I want you to start thinking about stuff and it, because what has happened is this, and I'm, I'm gonna deal with this. I'm gonna start sharing things that's really been on my heart. A lot of times what has happened is when we've heard messages on prosperity, we have not heard the totality of things. We've heard bits and pieces of it, but then now when it comes all together, because, uh, and I'll just be honest, I know what it's like. If I only have 40, 45 minutes to preach to you, I'm not sharing every single thing I know about a subject. I'm just starting the process of sharing things to get you in the mindset, number one, but then start moving you in that direction. So now also we need to have structure for the daily ins and outs. See, a lot of times we saw stuff, and I, and I gotta talk about these things, because some, some people think about this stuff, but they don't talk about it. See, I've been in church for years, pretty much all my life. 
And I've grown up in these circles around these great men and women of God who have even talked about financial success. And I've had privy conversations, you know, behind the scenes and things of that nature, and things that you know and information and things of that nature. And sometimes what happens is we preach from a certain place. Just like when we see seeing people um, when prosperity was really introduced, we saw the giving aspect. And we saw a lot of people giving and sowing to, to bring God's people out. And that's one aspect of it. And we saw preachers flourish and prosper and thrive. But one of the reasons that took place is because, number one, that was a vehicle for the preacher themselves. Because scripture talks about if we preach the gospel, we should live off the gospel. So, yeah, even from Old Testament, that the priests of the Most High God were able to receive from the giving of the people so that they could live and be sustained in life because their role was to be in connection with God and now bless the people. And so a lot of times what happens is some people just think that just the giving will now produce all this because they see the preacher increase, which hey, is the will of God. I believe that for the preacher to be successful, to prosper, to flourish and to grow. But sometimes we didn't think about the standpoint of that was part of their vehicle to receive. And you know, the vast majority ain't up there preaching. So then people are giving, but they never set up a structure to receive the wealth because now the giving to the preacher puts them in a position for that power, that anointing of increase to come upon them. And as you give, it's supposed to be giving back to you again, good measure, pressed down, shaking together and running over that God says he'll cause men to give unto your bosom in Luke 6:38. But when you look in the Amplify, when it says bosom, it says the pouch that is formed. So in other words, what is the vehicle that is formed to receive what people are giving to you? And so sometimes what happens is if you're just under that E as an employee, that's the only pouch that you have formed so far to receive. So yes, you can receive increase. Yes, you can receive raises, but then it'll come to a point to the limitation. Okay, let me show it like this. This bottle is 16.9 ounces, all right? The water in this bottle, this bottle can only contain and handle 16.9 ounces because of how it's structured. I can try to pour a gallon into this and it will not hold a gallon of water because it's not big enough to hold a gallon of water. It is only constructed to hold 16.9 ounces. Likewise, so this, if I was to say this would be the bosom or the pouch formed. If my bosom is small, then my receiving ability is small. That'll preach right there. You boy, that, that hit. If, if what I created is small, <laughs> then my receiving is small. So what have you created to receive greater? So if I want more water, to, if I want this to handle more water or hold more water, I need a bigger container. And so what God is saying is, I need for you to begin to think and to create larger and expand larger to receive more and to receive greater. Okay? All right, come on, this is good. So yeah, we're hitting this. So now, uh, I'm turning like I got the board behind me, but you know, I got my imaginary board here. So I said the E, then I talked about the self-employed. The thing about self-employed is this, it takes a lot more effort, discipline, strength, energy, and know-how to be successful as a self-employed individual because you're the staff, you're the one starting it, you're the one that got to run things. In the beginning when you're starting your own, you got to do the books, you got to do the inventory, you got to do the maintenance, you got to fulfill the orders, you have to perform the service, the work, whatever it is. Now you can begin to shift from the self-employed to the other side. Now we all, we, we really want to get onto that right side of the B and the I where it's business owner or investor. Okay. So the business owner side is when you create a business, um, now so I didn't get it to, to the media team. So, cause we would have had it up on the screen for you. So I'm just, I'm flowing with the Holy Ghost right now. So on this side, when you start off, most people start off as a self-employed person to transform into a business owner. And now with a business, a business is when you can, I'm going to just try to break it down as, as, as plain as I can, where you have a system in place where it can generate for you and work for you. Even if you're not there, do you have the system in place 
to generate for you and that you walk away and are able to leave for a moment and it's still growing and thriving. Listen to this. This is how Jesus did it. Jesus empowered his disciples who turned into the apostles, the original apostles. He told them to go occupy, do business till I come. He left, gave them authority, which in turn meant giving us as the church authority, but his organization has been growing ever since he left. It's been flourishing. It's been prospering. It's been accelerating because he began to empower his team to begin to grow the product, which is him and to say eternal life. And so now it began to spread from generations throughout generations. And so if you want to turn that into something, let me, let me, let me share, share with you. Cause see, this is, this is the stuff. And I know even from you ready to prophesy that God gonna make you a millionaire by tomorrow, but see, even though the word comes out and now with that word comes the empowerment, this is the daily stuff. This is the ins and outs that's going to get you from point A to point Z. And see, see, this is the, some of the stuff you see, cause you don't see what everybody does behind the scenes. You don't see their work ethic. You don't see, I'm going to talk about all that stuff. You don't see how many long hours they put in. You don't see the amount of seed that they have sown. You just see the harvest or you see the finished product, but you don't see everything that people do in and out on a day in day out basis. And so sometimes then you try to figure out what well, God I'm doing, what they're telling me to do. I'm tithing. You've been tithing for 20 years, but you're not experiencing wealth. You've been giving for years, but you don't still see that wealth. It's more to it than just the giving because if giving alone would have done it, most of you would have been financially successful by now. If it was just that alone, but we realize it's not just that alone. So now, now watch this. You structure your business where you're still working for the money, but you have a system where it's producing. Then you move to the I side, <clears throat> to the I stage. That's an investor where now you're causing your money to work for you. You're putting it, whether it's in real estate, stocks, whatever, the kingdom of God. See, to me, see, giving into the kingdom of God is an investment. Even scripture talks about that. Listen, some, listen, when you sow, that you will get back 30, 60, or 100 fold. That's still great return. If you just know anything about investing, that's an excellent return. Even the lowest of 30% is a great return on your investment. Can you just understand that? So the kingdom of God, sowing into projects, sowing into outreach initiatives, sowing to now build edifices, sowing to do these things, to be a blessing to people as a whole, to get the gospel out. It is the greatest investment that we can make. Now watch this. It's the greatest, but it's not the only one that's at our disposal. So now you want to take your money and now research as to where you're planning it, where you're putting it. In the book of uh, Matthew 25, it talks about um, um, the five, the two, and the one talent. It talks about a, stu is a stewardship um, account. And so the Bible says that the master gave to his people according to their ability. So he gave to one person five talents, to another one he gave two talents, to another he gave one. But the scripture says he gave it to them according to their ability. Because now when he came back, the one who had five doubled his money gave back 10. The one who had two doubled his money, gave back four. The one who had the one, he didn't give back anything. He didn't do anything with his money because he was afraid. And so he said he hid it. The master said you should have at least put it, just, just paraphrasing it, at least put it in the bank so that you can get interest off of it. You didn't do anything with the money. You just hid it. You just held on. You just maintained. And whenever you just maintain, you never advance and grow. And that is not God's will. And he called him a wicked and slothful servant because he did not multiply what the master had given him. This is why God is showing us something. He has called us to be fruitful, to multiply, to subdue, to replenish and have dominion. And if you're not growing, then listen, if you're not moving forward, you're moving backward. Why do I say that? Even if you stagnant, that means everybody else advancing and you still in position and you're never progressing. And so God says this, take what you have and watch this. And this is the interesting thing about that particular account. He never gave them instruction what to do with the money because he gave it to them according to their ability. He knew the one he gave five to, he knew what was in that person. 
likewise the two and the one. But he gave them an opportunity to multiply what they had. And so when God says, I've given you the power to get wealth so that you may establish, he may establish his covenant. He has already given us this ability. But now the question is, what are we doing with it? And so now what God wants us to do, he wants us to structure our lives where we finally get to that place where our money is working for us while we even sleeping. There's a scripture in Isaiah that talks about your gates shall not be shut day or night that the wealth of the nation shall come unto you. That means it's something that you have that's producing for you while you sleeping, while you living your life and you are able to enjoy the fruit of it, the dividends, the, 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 the profit. Cause he said in Isaiah, I'm the Lord, your God, and I teach you how to profit. And so God wants to teach you how to profit and how to increase. And so now that's in the wealth and riches side. See, I'm just, I'm just, this is still with the five provision levels. I didn't mean to go that far with it, but hey amen, it's good anyway. And then letter E, I said the fifth or E, I got E on my notes. It's generational wealth and riches. And this is to be passed on to your children and your children's children. Generational wealth and riches. Not just you walking in wealth and riches, but can your seed, Live off of what you produce. Man. Man, this is something. Can your seed, can your children and your grandchildren live off of what you produce? See, a good man leaves an inheritance, the Bible talks about, for his children's children. The Amplified says of moral stability. So a part of it is the character in which you teach and how you train your children to live. So if you teach them according to the word, then they'll begin to function in the principles that will produce for them generationally. See, this is what's happened even amongst African-Americans. See, slavery, it, I, I'm telling you, it, it messed a lot of people up. It disrupted homes and families. And we're feeling and still feeling the, 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 was it the reverberation of those things from times from years, hundreds of years. And some people say, man, why don't you just get over it? Listen, it's because things have been passed. Men were taken out of their homes from their families, murdered, killed, deported to other places. And a mentality was implemented. A mentality was given to them that they weren't worth nothing. You see, it was afraid for them to learn how to read. Because see, listen, listen, uh, it, was, it was a threat to the master, to the slave master, for a slave to know how to read. Because once they could learn how to read, then wait a minute, they got new information. And once they got new information, it's like, wait a minute, wait a minute now. Because even scripture says my people are destroyed because of a lack of knowledge. Once they realize who they are, then wait a minute, they might rise up and not, allow, and not be succumbed to us. So now we have to implement fear to keep them oppressed so that they won't ever rise up. But hey, you always have somebody that God always has that rises up in an, from an oppressive people to bring freedom and deliverance. And God is saying, listen, your struggle days are over. You are already free and you need to see yourself as free. You need to see yourself as producers. You need to see yourself as kingdom makers. You need to see yourself. And, and listen, I, I just got to be honest. I, I've been holding stuff in too doggone long. And listen, I'm, I'm tired of seeing and hear me, hear me. My white brothers and sisters that are out there, listen, I love you. Love you with the Lord, the, the love of God. I love all of my people. I love all of God's creation. But it's time out for us just seeing certain faces that are captains of industry that are running territories and regions and running the culture. And it's time that God is going to take those that are last and bring them to the forefront. And I am prophesying this thing. You are going to see it at a greater level. They're going to be, I'm going to declare it. I'm going to declare it. There are more millionaires going to come up in the earth. More leaders going to come up in the earth. And God is going to use us to do it. He's going to use us as one of the catalysts. I don't, he says this, teach my people who they are. Oh, man, I'm telling you, it's, it's, this thing has just been ringing in me. It's growing in me at such a level that God wants you to be kingdom producers that he wants us to rule and reign in this life through and by Christ Jesus. 
I'm going to have to pick up next week. I, I, man, I took, man, I didn't realize how long I've been preaching. Y'all forgive me. I didn't mean to go this long. I did not mean to go this long. I'm going to have to stop. I'm going to have to stop. I'm going to be like my, my man, Apostle Fred Price, how he's just in the middle of his preaching. Once that time was up, he stopped instantly. <laughs> just the discipline. I just got to stop. I'm in a good place where I can stop, where we can pick up next week dealing with the different laws, the different laws. I already started touching in on some of them, but we can dig in next week and start dealing with them. And God wants you to have, man, I'm telling you, God wants you blessed. He wants you successful. He wants you to succeed. But it always starts with a personal decision for the Lord Jesus Christ. Then when we become born again, we have God's nature abiding on the inside of us. His power, his ability abides in us to be successful in all that we do. And if you're here today, you never made Jesus the Lord of your life. I want you to listen. Make this decision. Make this decision. Make, it's going to be the best decision you ever made. Come out of darkness into the marvelous light. Yeah. Yeah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Come out of darkness into the marvelous light. Get born again. Come on the winning team. Come on the winning team. Come on the winning team. Praise God. That's you. And you say, you know what? I want to get saved. I want to get born again. I want you to repeat this prayer after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I believe that you're the Christ, the son of the living God. I believe that you died for me. I believe that you were raised from the dead for me. Come inside my heart now, Lord Jesus. I receive you as my Lord, and I make you the Lord of my life. Say, thank you, Heavenly Father, for giving me your son. I'm saved now, and I'm born again. Now, even as right now, even as you're praying, I want you to pray right now, because there's also now what's called, this is another experience called the baptism with the Holy Spirit, with the evidence of speaking with other tongues. After salvation, this is the greatest experience you can have, because now being born again qualifies you to receive the Holy Spirit in his fullness. See, the Holy Spirit has a part to play in the born-again process. When you just receive Christ as your Lord and Savior, according to 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 13, but we have all been baptized into one body by one spirit, and that's the Holy Spirit. He's the one that recreates in you a brand-new born-again human spirit. Your nature is like God's now, okay? You have the nature of God abiding in you, the life of God abiding in you. And now the Bible says that you can be filled with the Holy Spirit, where he comes to live, God, and to, to dwell on the inside of you, where now he'll give you a supernatural utterance, ability to speak in a heavenly language, where you can pray out perfect prayers, the will of God. You can pray out wisdom. You can strengthen yourself spiritually by doing this. I'm telling you, man. I listen, when I got filled with the Holy Ghost, I remember at 16 years old, man, I, the, the Spirit of God began to flow and flood out of me like a river of living water. I'm telling you, man, it was the, I have never been the same since. I just thank God for him. He is my comforter. He is my counselor. He is my friend. He gives me peace. When everything goes chaotic, I can settle in him. He can calm me down and say, Mike, it's going to be fine. This is what you do. Speak life. Pray, build yourself up. You can receive them right now. Right now, real quick, real quick. Say, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, come inside me now. Fill me now. Fill me now to overflowing. Give me the ability to speak with other tongues as you give me the utterance. In the name of Jesus, I receive you now in Jesus' name. Now, come on. Just begin to open up your mouth. Begin to speak. La ramando cumbre, out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. Glory to God. Shokumbra sikana in the bread. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory to God. Okay, okay. Now listen. If that's you and you you received today, let us know. Please contact us. Let us know. I got filled with the Holy Ghost today. You can just send us a quick message. You can message us on Facebook. You can. Go to our website at spiritoffire.us and do it. But we want you to just, just, just quickly. We don't want you to, to, to now just log off and, and don't let anybody know what happened to you and happened with you and for you and in you. We want to be there for you, to love on you, to train, to teach you, to develop you. Also, um, for those that want to connect with this ministry and you want to join and become a partner, a member of this ministry, 
please contact us. The information is coming up of how you can connect with us to let us know, hey, I'm looking for a church home. I don't care if you're somewhere else in another state, another country. You can be a part of our e-church family. Right now, we are virtual. And so even at this time where we are virtual, we are believing God to add daily, to begin to bring increase. And so we just thank God. We thank God that you're counted amongst the number. Pray. We believe in God for greater. Believe in God for more. Hallelujah. Listen, I believe everybody needs a pastor. That it is the will of God. The local church is the way that I believe that God is raising up his people in the earth to train and to develop, to be deployed into every sphere of influence. And so we thank God. If that's you and you want to connect with us, just reach out to our staff. You know, you just put the information in. We'll have somebody to contact you, how to obtain and maintain what you came to receive. Well, y'all, hey, um, at this point, we're going to give you an opportunity to give and to sow and to plant. And so we have some information that's coming up on the screen. Listen, honor God in your giving. Bring that offering with expectation. As you give, it's going to be given back to you again. Good measure, pressed down, shaking together and running over that God is causing men to give into your bosom. Don't do it under compulsion or out of necessity, but God loves a cheerful giver, a cheerful, prompt to do it giver whose heart is in their giving. And so we thank you so much for your continued support. We could not do what we do without the continued support of our partners and friends and family and loved ones and the members of this ministry. We thank God for you so much. We love you, Spirit of Fire. Pastor Rock and I love you so much. We miss seeing you guys. Um, and we want to, we really want to connect more. We've been doing things via Zoom and text messaging and things of that nature. But it's just nothing like physically seeing people and being able to hug on them and love on them. I know people are at different stages in their belief system and how they're feeling about things. Everybody is not comfortable um, being out in, in large, larger assemblies and things of that nature. And we know that certain guidelines we have to address and be mindful of. But um, my heart is that we begin to plan to do some things soon where we can have some level of connection uh, where we can come together and worship God. So uh, I'm telling you, man, until we get that time right now, we're just staying in this zone, in this space. Um, and listen, I want to encourage you guys, too. Um, and I don't, sometimes I don't address some of this stuff as much as I need to, but I think it's very important. You know, some people may wonder what I'm thinking about the vaccine and things of that nature. One of the things I'm like is this, you know, I prayerfully consider everything. I pray, I say, okay, my number one trust is in the Lord. You know, y'all know my faith. It's like, hey, I declare and decree that every disease, germ, virus, bad bacteria, and infirmity that touches my body dies instantly. But I also believe that God does work where science is concerned as well. And he, he can partner with individuals in medical science to produce things that are a blessing to people. Um, you know, everybody is different. You take, you consider uh, what it is that you desire for you and your family. I don't want you to feel pressured either way. You know, because sometimes amongst faith circles, uh, we can put the pressure on, don't take that stuff, you know, just trust God. Well, you know what, sometimes trusting God and using wisdom that he gives you to know what to do and how to do. So if that's you and that you're believing God and he knows how to work with you at your level of faith. And so whatever it is you're believing for, we would just want to let you know we love you. We're praying for you. And if you desire to take the vaccine, then we pray that there are no adverse effects of that vaccine, um, even as you take partake of it. And so, and vice versa, if you feel as though, you know what, I just right now, I don't, I don't feel like, I don't feel comfortable taking it. We also pray for your protection and that the blood of Jesus covers you, that it, just like we always say, every disease, germ, virus, bad bacteria, and infirmity that touches your body dies instantly. And so, but I, I want you, and I don't want you to feel as though that if you take the vaccine, it's a lack of your faith, okay? So if you desire to do so and, you know, um, make sure you do the research properly and things of that nature. And everybody's different. So we're not going to put no guilt trip on you either way. So I just pray and I support you and what you do and just let you know that we do love you and we do appreciate, excuse me, appreciate you. Um, okay. So I just want to at least just touch on that um, a little bit and talk about that. So, well, guys, I love you. Excuse me. I love you so much. And uh, hey, I'm, I'm so full right now. I'm ready to teach on the rest of the stuff, but we'll pick up next week and start working on this. And so, cause I got a, uh, another series that I want to start that I believe that coming out of this, that I believe was laid on my heart to deal with. It's been in me for a minute, but I believe I need to start uh, releasing it now after this one. And I'll let you know about it uh, shortly. And so 
Um, as we go, I pray for your peace. I pray that all is well with you and your family. I pray for success in your life. I pray for peace in your home, loving marriages, loving relationships with parents and children, and, and that you just enjoy life in abundance to the full. So on behalf of Pastor Rock and I, we just want to say, may the grace and peace of God rest upon you all, the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, and that you live long and live strong and prosper in all that you do. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. God bless you all. Love you guys. See you next time. Peace.